Life's a game, the world's a stage, and we are merely role players, where theatrical people play role playing games. I've been Matt, your compere for this main house production, and I am joined first of all by Ellie. Hello, I'm Ellie. I've been playing Percy, Byron, the Exile. <laughs> I'm Strat. <laughs> I've been playing Briar the Monstrous. Uh, I'm Dave. I've been playing Mick, the maybe not as mundane as he <laughs> seemed to be. <laughs> Uh, I'm Chris, I've been playing Ed Kincaid, the professional. So, there is some post-show admin that we need to do, uh, that is mandated by Monster of the Week, before we can ask all of the burning questions that I'm sure we all have. Question number one. Did we conclude the current mystery? Yes! Yes. I agree. Question number two. Did we save anybody from certain death or worse? Yeah. Yeah. I banished Trevor slash Ada from the police officer. Yep, and you saved Charlton, Charlton and Dennis. Dennis. Oh, well. yeah. We have left them in the oubliette, though. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we, we did lose some civilians. Yeah, this hasn't did. happened a lot no, in Israel, the, but the, we the did lose a couple. Was it was quite high, high though. It's like, Barrel was particularly... Yeah. <laughs> there wasn't much we could have done about that. No, I mean, was it Stan? Stan, Stan yeah, yeah. Was yeah. He was being weird near the car, though. I mean, actually, yeah, you say only does. You did shoot him. He was on fire. He was on fire. In any case, that's two yeses. Uh, yeah. Did we learn something new and important about the world? Yes. yes. I would say so, but several things, not least uh, giants mm-hmm. are sleeping under England. Yeah. Did we learn something new and important about one of the hunters? Yeah. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Great. So that's four yeses, which means everybody gets two XP. Ooh. I believe there's been at least some uh, advancing levelling up this session. Does anybody know immediately something that they're going to take with an advancement from this session, or is anybody is everyone going to go away and think about it? And I think Incade uh, is ready to admit that some knowledge of magical things might not be a terrible idea, even if he doesn't become magical. Uh-huh. Uh, so I'll probably be looking in some other playbooks, possibly cool. the expert one, the mm-hmm. one that's basically Giles. I feel like um, Dave's got a level think... twice on the on the number of. Um experience things you've got i did get a lot of experience but also i feel like there's quite a bit of work to do to work out what mick is now yeah <laughs> so again probably have to do some looking into other playbooks one of I... them is turn this hunter into yeah. a completely different mm-hmm. yeah. class i think one of the yeah. level up things yeah. yeah yes i have a future production pretty much planned all around that stuff oh, so good. you know great we'll get you back sometime well, we'll was that. it with, did it go the way you were hoping it would? I didn't sense. think that was going to come up today. <laughs> but <laughs> but I'm excited you kind of that it thought did. that's what it would have been mm-hmm. for the future planned one. Yes. Yeah, so. Yes. I had I had the explanation yeah. in my back pocket. Mm-hmm. I just didn't expect it to come out today. Mm-hmm. But it's cool that it did. Well, I did find it weird every time you were doing anything. It was just like, this, are you sure you've got the right like, playbook? Because <laughs> <laughs> the Monday, you've got about yeah, exactly. nine character sheets in front of you. They all say the mundane at the top. <laughs> and he's just like, hey, I'll just do some magic. Yeah, I'll, I'll just lift a van. <laughs> It's, it's, it's all it. Brian's curiosity that's caused this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. what's going on? It definitely on? wouldn't have happened at all. Like, I don't think I'd have done anything magic mm-hmm. if you weren't particularly interested in it and pushing it. Because mm. in the in the in playtime, it just kind of happened with, like, a, you jumped through a window and you didn't yeah. hurt yourself. That's the level of it, mm-hmm. which is what I was expecting today. I wasn't expecting <laughs> to be Baloo the Bearing with <laughs> or Mowgli the uh, <laughs> puffer fish on my tummy. <laughs> Down the Leyline River. I, I don't think anyone was expecting that. <laughs> this episode is absolutely ripe for some fan art. So. <laughs> yeah, and um, that whole solution of, you know, I put the flood water in for contrast and atmosphere. Mm. It's like you're beating a demon of flame and there is water everywhere. It's just like, ooh, elements. I thought it was a bit but of relief you, from the real world drought that we're like, God, as well. Yes. So. <laughs> but, you know, the way that you solved the town's flooding problem and also the demon problem at once was brilliant and kind of really in the spirit of the series. Good. And all we had to do is wreck the entire lay of the land. <laughs> hey, that bit. Yeah, yeah. created some hot springs. Yeah. The charcoal business can relocate. Yeah, that's another reason for tourists to come. Yes, absolutely. Sure in hot springs. The, the thing that I think we have to talk about is we just wrote a character out yeah. by the sound of it. Yeah. Ellie, what are you going to do? Do you want to... I'd like a new one, please. A new one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You could do with all your free time now. <laughs> I mean, at least we just wrote them sort of elsewhere yeah. in the multiverse. Mm. Yeah, there is. It there was is. heading towards writing them right out. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, I suppose if there was a need, then mm. you, you could write in a, a cameo return for some <laughs> sort of uh, big bad fighting. But 
That's the um, whole point of the multiverse, isn't it? Yeah. It's you, yeah. somewhere, somewhere you put somebody until you need them, and then you well, find the, a way to get them back. The usual epilogue in a time travel multiversal thing is like, oh, the time travel worked, and she disappears, and then two seconds later she reappears, and she's got an eye patch. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> she's like, we have to do something about your kids, Marty. <laughs> I did get close to doing some um, Back to the Future quotes a few times. <laughs> We've got to go back. No. I didn't even realise we did. We had a time machine and then a train appeared immediately. Yeah. <laughs> really? yeah. yeah. Not an intentional homage. But yeah, um, Percy's gone. Yeah. Do you feel satisfied with that as an ending? Were yeah. you kind of expecting it? Um. Well, we had had a brief discussion about there being a big, de- a big decision coming Percy's way. And... Um, that to my mind translated as you, you can take a death scene. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I was I was sort of all prepared to go in and and have a, a death scene that would mean that this big bad was solved because that seemed to be a potential end to this kind of arch nemesis arc for her. But um, this has been even more satisfying because it it satisfies the character's desires as well, and it. I think it always made sense for a time traveling character to only be there for some of the time and to not just live in out of time forever. So, yeah, and it, all, all the choices felt very in keeping with Percy's motivations and character. So I was happy. I guess because, like, if you've got a time traveler character, like the story ends kind of either way, if uh, either get back to where they're trying to be or just accept that they're not going. Mm. And both of those things kind of end the like interest of that yeah. story so yeah it's short lived and i think it's quite it would be quite sad for percy to just carry on living out of time when so. did you decide you wanted to do this because i had no idea yeah. <laughs> uh, so that was a wonderful surprise <laughs> i i dropped hints to ellie out of, like away from the table right. that we would be dealing with that with her demon nemesis this session oh. and then we had a bit of a a chat just about ways that it like ways that it might go and decisions that might come your way. I didn't spoil any of the no, Ada I, stuff. No, there was Puff an, top of the list, presumably. Of course, <laughs> there was yeah, there was an offer from Matt to reveal information to me, and I said I didn't want to know. Mm-hmm. Um, but we did talk about you know the basically just stuff that had already been on air about what it had said it wanted, mm, what yeah. the offer it was placing on the table was, just to give Ellie a bit of time away from the table to think mm. like. How might I react in different yeah. situations? And I feel like that was great because you immediately had the like the time travel solution to this. I feel like there are lots of other ways that this could have gone. Yeah, well, it was the, a very elegant way of the, tying the it The time travel solution I didn't have until today. Oh, I had, right. That hadn't occurred to me really. It was as we were talking that I suddenly thought that might work. Because my initial thing was, oh, if I'm presented with the option to turn back time, I'm going to take it. Mm. Because I think that's what Percy would do. And sort of sod the consequences. Like, she'd have a bit of, like, oh, don't feel great about this, but I'm still going to do it. But, yeah, it sort of... I just thought, she's probably watched The Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> we did it quite quickly, but there were, we did a roll to see whether the experiment worked. Yeah. And that, you know, it passed by quite fast, but it was a very important roll. Mm. It came off well. It was a 10 plus, so the plan worked exactly as Percy imagined it would. We, there could have been some time travel weirdness on a lower mm-hmm. role. We well, you have... say we wrote out a character, we nearly yeah. wrote out a lot of others. Yeah. Mm. If you leave that thing stuffed to a role, it's like, oh, I'm going to trust you, but... Yeah, it could have gone very wonky. But I, I, sus- I thought if it goes wonky, it'll probably be just in terms of me managing to go back to the right time or mm. Ava surviving the journey mm-hmm. or something like that, and it'll just lead to a bit of a sad ending for Percy, which would cool. be fine. Yeah. Briar spent luck right at the start of the session so I had to really hammer you on all of the bad mischief for the entire session which felt fun to me How yes was that it was good it was good there were a few times where I think it must have felt like Brian Mike when you're like no I'm just trying to do this thing and now I have to now this need this outside influence is trying to get me to do something I just enjoyed the constant like oh I'd like to do this thing okay yeah uh, and how are you going to fuck it up <laughs> Yeah, we haven't really gone, you're right, you haven't gone full, how are you going to fuck it up? Yeah, but that was good. And how would you like to, to do marked this? off yeah. two bucks now, yeah. it feels like you, you've got to, you do have to push to push that character to do something, because there's no other, nothing else that luck does. So. No, and so Kincaid 
set up right from the beginning as somebody who is on terrible terms with MI5, and yet you just keep acing the uh, deal with the agency roles. Yeah, Chris. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you, you... They, they, they still never seem happy to hear from me. <laughs> oh, so no. like, it's not really. It doesn't feel like it's increasing my standing. With no, the it's always so be- that's fine. It's always begrudging, but you know they're giving you, know, you stuff. I still get stuff. Get out the Morris a bit more. <laughs> As my yeah. bu- department's budget goes up, yeah, you know they've got to justify more taxpayer dollar. Yeah. yeah, I mean you didn't get a lot of evidence from this one, so I don't know that this particular escapade is gonna like increase your standing anymore. No, until I had to get up close when big fiery things mm-hmm. were happening, I was going to you know try and gather something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but as soon as it was like. No, nope, I can see where this is going. I'm going to run as fast as I can in the other direction. <laughs> I did like that choice. Uh, and your next time you're on, you're going to have a lot of red tape to deal with. Yep. Because of a luck spend. Um, which reminds me that, Dave, you also spent luck. I did, So next yeah. time I need to have you find something mm. kind of that might that is weird but might be useful. Yes, might be. <laughs> it, there didn't seem to be a good opportunity for it this Although time. Will it was, it was that still late. be the thing? Yeah. <laughs> because will he still be the Monday? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, my luck might change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be that'll be up to you. That'll be an interesting decision to make. I mean, I guess mechanically doomed is basically your character's done for. Uh, you used all your luck. The, it, it's uh, a lot easier to get damaged. Yeah. Once doomed, mm-hmm. so that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're you're more likely to get into situations where you'll get hurt. And you can't get out of it with luck. Yes, yeah, you can't get out of it with luck. It gives you just enough time to sort of play out your <laughs> sort of last stand, really. Because <laughs> as soon as the uh, the GM can just hammer you for whatever, <laughs> whenever they please, it's like you don't have long. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you've got nothing to protect yourself with. Yeah, exciting times ahead for Mick. Mm. <laughs> Any more little questions before we wrap up? I'm glad I didn't have to shoot anyone. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say... There was I was going to. Yeah. Like, so it's like, yeah. if you carry on with this without, like... Yeah, yeah, and like, that would have been justified. Like, if you just started working on the machine, it would be like, well, forget it then. <laughs> oh, oh, I guess she's possessed. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why I was keen to get an explanation head first. <laughs> but yeah, no, I liked that. I liked that moment. Mm. I thought that was exactly the right move. And yeah. the same move Percy would have done if the roles were reversed, to be It honest. was interesting, because it wasn't, wasn't the most active role for Kincaid in the climax, but you were... Uh, you made the whole thing more tense by being there on, like, ready to deal with it. I think it's about as active as a role he would want. <laughs> well, I mean, and he pressed the button. No like, it couldn't have happened without Yeah, didn't want to do that bit. Yeah. No. It's far too close to get the gun. <laughs> I've got a high-powered rifle for a reason. It could be far away. And also you had, like, just enough kind of plausible deniability now where it's like, no, I saw nothing, nothing happened, it's all fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would be... I would I would be interested to know how all the different characters react to Percy having mm. gone. Because Kincaid, who is probably one of the people who's least close to her, as in in terms mm. of like spending time together outside of jobs, was the only one that was there and saw the decision making mm. and witnessed the departure. That's true. And we'll forget all of it. Maybe. Yeah. I'm going to try parts. and forget a bit less. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping he relayed it quickly to, to Mick or something yeah. so that. Well, if, if Kincaid, if Kincaid decides that he wants to make the effort to not forget things, he has lots of people around him who can teach him how to do that. Mm. So, like, mm. whatever level you want to have remembered, you can remember. Yeah, I feel like he's at the point where, like, all the stuff he, like, reports into the agency, and now that they've acknowledged at least one mm-hmm. event, and now probably two, <laughs> that actually something happened, then, like, he's at least got that to, you know, just solidify it as an actual thing that happened. Character development. Mm. We love to see it. Mm-hmm. It was great Thank fun. You. Br- really brilliant mm. narrative stuff, Matt. Thank you very much. And usual question, Matt. Mm. What, what hit that you weren't expecting? Like, what... Yeah, and I what mean, stuff was, that you expected didn't mm, happen. Like the mixed stuff wasn't necessarily on your radar for today. It, no, it um, wasn't. But was there anything else that happened that you were like, oh, I thought, they, well, like you said, with the fire, mm-hmm. the fire truck might have been a similar <laughs> solution. But, but, <laughs> I mean, but I didn't have that plan from the start. Yeah. I was just like, in the moment, as you were all talking about mm. it, I was like, I know what would be a simpler thing. <laughs> <laughs> the super soakers on your radar, because yeah, yeah. we're both thinking super yeah. soakers. Yeah. yeah. Which are just um, small fire trucks, really. Yeah, if you think about it. <laughs> I guess the other possible thing was, like, th- another way it could have shaken out with the way that we set it up at the start was that Mick gets captured and becomes the bait, and mm. we have, like, mm. scenes with Mick and the monster. Yeah. Mm. Where, like, 
you know, Mick can have a conversation and that that might have been interesting to see what that would have been like. But I liked all of the stuff that we did get, so I'm yeah, not whether about Mick that. would have any chance of identifying yeah. who it was and what was going on. <laughs> yeah, and I enjoyed all of the Jake all of the antics running around running from people running from on fire people and shutting them in trapdoors. And... <laughs> we struggled enough with you getting down here it was in the situation we actually got in it. It was these hot guys. <laughs> Everyone's really hot. We need to get them wet. <laughs> it felt. It definitely felt like the first act was a farce. Yeah. Oh yeah. Which we is very enjoyable. Vigil, wet, hot summer. Yes, <laughs> that's the title, right? <laughs> um, was there any stuff you had like loaded up that didn't come in? Like any NPCs that you thought you were going to step up and? Didn't? Uh, no NPCs. I just had different options for different ways that the final kind of climax encounter can go. Yeah. I don't think there was any world where we wouldn't get the revelation of that it was Ada. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because that's so important. But depending on how that conversation went and Percy's decisions, how willing Percy might be to help. Yeah. The implications of all the time travel stuff, like there was a world where you still had to fight her mm-hmm. or where like out of guilt, she just let Trevor take over so that you wouldn't have to feel too bad about killing her, yeah. like that sort of stuff. But I feel like we got the good ending on that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's great. Very good one. Very good one. Right. Thank you all again. Thank and you. I'm Hope to see you back to play again another time. Yes, please. Woo. Monster of the Week, a role-playing game by Michael Sands, published by Evil Hat Productions. You can find Monster of the Week at genericgames.co.nz. Merely Role Players is a Foggy Outline production in association with Blackshaw Theatre Company. Until next time, if drama be the food of life, play on. <laughs>